Well, we're back in Hayoi. Last time we were here, we spoke to Stephen Dynamite, a uh, badly disheveled man who used to make bombs, but now he's a drug addict, and he's upset about it, but if you threaten him, he'll open up to you, and his dealer gives you free drugs for some reason, but you can keep his money, and then everyone involved is just kind of weird. And I don't Also, he's really like, understand. he's still here and interactable. Here, yeah. I'm not going to click on him again, though. Very, very strange. Um, all right. I'll click on this guy instead. Yeah. All right, so what do you think we should do today? Um, I think we should check out the possibilities of a shadow run uh, and see what our options yeah, are for runners. Idea. Yep. This guy seems to be the bodyguard for Club 88. I think we've tried to talk to him once before, but before we spoke to kindly Cheng, he wouldn't let us in anywhere. He says he doesn't mess around. I believe him. He's large. Yeah, that's the end of the conversation, in fact. All right, so the possibilities of a shadow run, um, we know what they are. Uh, well, the mission computer will remind us what they are. I think there is a, an, a run system in the game. Basically, if you click on something very far away, you move to it more quickly. So that's not bad. He always smuggler. There's a smuggler in front of my boat. Hmm. They both look haggard, their shoulders slump with exhaustion, neither was shaved this morning. What do you want, man? We're talking here. You know, he's got a point, I'll just leave. Goodbye. <laughs> Sorry for the distraction there. I uh, saw a guy I could click on on the street, so I clicked on him. Here, in, then, is the mission computer. So, our pending jobs, well hang on, pending a pending a party. Ah, we haven't, pending like, jobs are actually yeah. yeah jobs that we have yet to take, aren't they? So that's actually an extra thing we can do on top of the uh, accepted jobs, which are Artifact Liberation and Serial Killer. And the one we were interested, interested in doing first is Artifact Liberation. Mr. Drake, who wants to liberate Oh, God, from yes, this guy spoke forever. Um, yeah, let's click through his video very quickly. Yeah, uh, there was some cool stuff. I'm sure that we'll get a reminder of it when we actually go out on the job. So, is there anything we need to do before going out on this? But immediately before leaving, we will visit Maximum Law, save the game, buy stuff that's possibly for Izerobel, and see if she uses it. Um, let's what else? talk to Izerobel uh, yeah, about the last sure. run, because if we do it, we're going on another run with her. Um, Indeed, it would not be the last run anymore after afterwards. And we did talk to Gobbit, let's not play favourites at this point, although I like Gobbit. <laughs> Though, not that Isabel is particularly sociable. Uh, in fact, let's call her out on that. You're a, you're a computer liker. Huh. She thinks Danny is a mystery. I mean, I guess he probably is if you're, like, listening to Duncan. He's like, yeah, the guy vanished for eight years, don't know where he went. Now he's come back with glasses on, he never takes them off. Nice, I'm getting interrogated. She's going to ask something personal. It's the question game. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Tell me what you really think about Duncan. Uh, he's, he's like a brother to me, I, is, is, I think. That is definitely how they act. Yep. You know. Ah, she's got a sisterly relationship with Gobbit, she claims. Or implies, or indicates... And now we get to ask her one question. We could ask about Gobbit, or about decking, or about the walled city. Walled city one seems too open-ended. Doesn't really respect the game of the questions. Mm. Like, tell me about this. Speak about X. That isn't yeah. that isn't the spirit of the question game. You ask yeah. a discreet question. How, how did you and Gobbit meet? Oh, they met in the walled city. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We've come around at, uh, to the other uh, angle there. You but... can't ask another question. All right. Yeah, there's not. A, we've ended the question game early, but let's let's check in here. Childhood kind of a blur. Yeah, everyone. I, I mean, she's the only person I met who's from the Wall City and not still in it, and does not seem to enjoy that. It seems to be a place that's eating people, like uh, what's her name, Crafty's mum. That would make it my turn. Hey, we do get another question. Okay, what was your connection to Raymond Black? Hmm. 
I don't. Mm, I think yeah. two makes more sense than one. Yeah, I think so. Duncan, I think, sees him as real family. Yes. Uh, and we see Duncan does. as real family, but we don't see Raymond. Yes. Yeah, that's right. It, it, it's, it's kind of transitive. Like, I still want to find and help Raymond, ideally, but he. I would say he's a rich old man who successfully bought my gratitude. But he didn't come after us, you know, in the prison. You and Duncan have very different takes on the same story. Yep, that's her thing. Yep. Where did she learn to dick growing up in a uh, a place where they don't have a lot of expensive computers? Ah, the Wampoa. All right. Okay, they know a lot, but uh, Israel doesn't actually like them. You enjoy it, don't you? Living like this, working the shadows. You what? I do. Uh, I think one, yeah. yeah. No, it's cool. I enjoy being the protagonist of a role-playing game. I mean, I feel like we've already got an answer to question one, but I'm going to ask it anyway because uh, it elaborates on the... Like, when we asked how did you and Gobbit meet, we, it kind of got cut off because it was an uncomfortable topic, so let's approach it from a different situation. That's really maybe recent, so... considering they yeah, grew up together. Maybe, maybe this is another thing where they knew each other before they started running together. Well, maybe they're, all, they're both pretty young. Well, Gobbit's been running for a long time. Yeah, that's a good point. Gobbit had a crew first. Uh, maybe Isabel is much younger than Gobbit is. Younger than she looks. It's a bit hard to tell with dwarves. You're stuck here, marooned. You and Duncan both. He's unhappy about the situation. Is there anything you want to get back to? <laughs> I'm a PC. <laughs> uh, my life began when I stepped off that boat. Yeah, I really enjoy that the third option is you, you can claim <laughs> that you had left stuff behind, but it is explicitly a lie. Uh, no, I think I think anything Danny Flash left in Seattle, he left eight years ago. Uh, yep, that's an option one. Yeah, Isabel points out that this is kind of sad. Look, I know. I'm just trying to yeah, I'm trying to look at the good points here. Oh, we're out of time. Physically. <laughs> ah, last question. It's the wall still city. not a question, dude. There's just no respect what for the it? question game here. See, and now now she owes us another one. <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's not a very good question, is it? The dreams. Um, the dreams are freaking everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Some guy on the street stumbles into me and tells me weird stuff about explosions, and he's having dreams. You go into a bookshop, and the bookshop owner is like, I have dreams. Maximum Law actually does not have the dreams, which to me says that they must be important. Um, yeah. Okay. We're not pressing. We, we fucked up this game like five times. We're not pressing our luck on yeah. that one. Okay. Yeah, we won't, we won't press right now. She knows something. She might not think it's oh, important. All right, before we go, though, like we do want to ask her about the last run. Oh, do we? Uh, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like the conversation's just ended, but... Jacked into the octopus. Whoa, oh, holy shit. shit. It's, uh... Cyber Isabel. Kosh. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I guess I better ask about the last run. I don't spoil my letter time with shop talk. Yeah, she doesn't want to talk about it. Oh, fair octopus. enough. I guess we missed our uh, our our window on that one. Yeah. She does, in fact, look different. Meat. I'm surprised she didn't get along with the Wampoans. There seem to be some pretty big aesthetic um, disagreements yeah. between the two. Yeah, yeah, they do have a very specific... Well, the, the one guy we've met yeah. has a specific aesthetic. Uh, I think he's got a very different background, like the, the people who grew up with the Wampoa as opposed to in Kowloon. Uh, yeah. Most of my time out there wishing that I were back in here. She must really enjoy Simon Says. <laughs> and matching symbols. Yeah. <laughs> It is kind of a nice avatar. It looks a bit like a piece of fantasy art someone draws for their role-playing game character. Feels more real to me than my own skin. Well, that's 
That is worrying, but... Hello. <laughs> now she's willing to talk about the walled city, as long as she's doing it from inside a computer. Now that she's comfortable. I feel like three is the uh, is the proper response here. It's the nice option. Let's, let's, let's be nice. Yeah. Talking about the walled city is problematic, she points out. I am actually going to push that this is important, right? Yeah. Like, well, it is. Like, it thing, is the plot. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's clearly the main plot of the game. <laughs> okay, doesn't like being called is. Truth of the matter is, I can't remember my childhood. Dan, dan, dan. Goddamn load bearing plot relevant amnesia. What the? Don't tell me they all grew up in the same orphanage. Um, I don't think that would work for a couple of different reasons. <laughs> um, but it does. It, what the thing it reminds me most of is that Raymond Black also claimed that his his, his previous history in the Walled City was a black box. Yeah, he didn't use the, the he didn't explicitly say amnesia, but it's interesting. It's a parallel. Like it does. Getting the kind of the feeling that maybe whoever is sending out these dreams is also using it as like a, you know, a, not a mind wipe, but a. Yeah, yeah. Well, as well as not knowing who they are, we don't know what they want to achieve, but it is very clear they want something, something that's trying to be done. When you're ready to hear what I know, just say the word, I'll tell you everything I can. Okay, yeah, well, tell me things then, anything, anything, things. Okay. Spiderwebs of light spread across the tiled ground of the octopus's sculpted matrix hub. So what's uh, the what, what's happening on the screen here to the left of the dialogue box is not what we're supposed to be imagining no. at this point, right? So you see Danny facing Isabel, but uh, you know, the idea is that she's in the chair and jacked in and we're talking to her on the screen and it's uh, just kind of mentally allied the left half of the screen from your consciousness and live in the world of the imagination instead we i wonder computer, if we discussion with the computer if we right? might have actually gotten that if we'd uh properly left and re-entered the room <laughs> possibly so mythology of the place so it has legends and Isabel, having actually lived there finds the story doesn't find the stories interesting except she doesn't remember living there which is interesting it's supposed to be cursed uh, at option I mean, three it, it, did you see option three yeah, but I, I decided very quickly not to click on it. But, uh, also, it is cursed, right? Yes, uh, but like, like we, we we know this. Uh, also, like ghosts are real. Wizards. Like ghosts are real. Yeah. <laughs> the the walled city is extremely cursed. Like we met a grad student who was like, "Yeah, I'm here to study the curse." We've met this bookkeeper who's like, "Yeah, I I live on the edge of this cursed place because the curse killed my mum." Danny is himself a wizard. He's been there and he saw that it was cursed. So, I believe it. Oh, the etiquette is doing that fucking thing again. <laughs> I like this one. I like the etiquettes. I, 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 like, I like academic. Yeah. Anyway, just being like, yes, I know this thing. Uh, Yama Kings. Monsters and morality tales. Urban legends slash god slash memes. Reminds me a little of the, uh, the Quantum Thief and its uh, Flower Prince Green Soldier. Have you ever read those books? I, the new Russian Yemi? I have not. It's they're, they're somewhat cyberpunk actually sci-fi books. The first one is called I think uh, I think it's actually called The Quantum Thief. Anyway, interesting stuff, but unrelated to Shadowrun apart from thematically. Fu Meng. So they had all these mythological associations from some of them from Chinese mythology and from Earth Dawn stuff, and they kind of got mixed into the real world slum life of the the city. People believe these things, told each other these stories. Interesting. Judge of Souls. Ebony Queen. Lan Vi. Pretty sure I dreamed about an Ebony Queen at one point. I mean, in the video game. Mm. Yeah, I, I should point out at this point, That's the... as we've been saying, magic is real. You better believe in Ghost Kid, because you're... <laughs> Because you're gonna become one. Yama Kings can't be real. Mm -hmm. Excuse their own actions. 
I see. So Isirabel's perspective, that the mythologies are a retreat for the inhabitants of this terrible place, a way to avoid getting out of it as she got out. Yep, she bootstrapped. She is pretty misanthropic. Uh, I wonder if she knows how she got out. That's an interesting possibility. It's, yeah, it is very think... funny that she's pulling the I worked hard to get out of, out of my uh, poverty, out of my living mm -hmm. circumstances, and everybody else too. How? Well, I can't remember that part. <laughs> it's possible she does remember that part. She said she didn't mention remember her childhood, right? But she met Gobbit four years ago, and she insinuated that you know, the Wall City was Gobbit's playground and her home, and that possibly, like, when they met, that may have been when Isirabel left the city. So possibly that is recent enough that she does actually know what she did, which is presumably becoming a Shadowrunner or going to join the Wampoa or whatever. Well, at the very least, then, she doesn't know about the circumstances of all those people that didn't pull themselves, quote-unquote, up by their bootstraps or yes, didn't work hard. They are the ones who are still there. The misery in the walled city isn't the fault of demons or devils. We create it and we perpetuate it. We blame made-up monsters for our own failings. See, <laughs> this is it's interesting. Like This game's writing is uneven to me. The, the stuff with Stephen Dynamite sucked, I thought. Mm -hmm. But I like this. I feel like this is actually clever, right? Yeah. Because um, what she's describing is there is there is like it's a subversion of, of this idea that now, yes, indeed, people tell themselves fairy stories and then they have, like, opinions and, and people who got out of an economic situation feel like other people could have done it too, etc., etc. Except in this setting, you know what, the monsters are actually real. And it's kind of a dangerous lie that you're telling yourself that the, that the people are responsible for everything. Like, it, you could be, they could be insect spirits or something and you're, like, hiding from them. It's, um, which then kind of plays into the the misanthropy character theme stuff. I uh, yeah, I like this. It stuff. turns atheism into the sort of religious fanatic option. The kind yeah, the, or at uh, least at least um, sticking your head in the sand. Yeah, like an article of faith that no, this shit isn't real. Mm -hmm. It isn't them. <laughs> they aren't real. They can't be. Yeah, you mean I don't want them to be. Or we're gonna have to like quibble over like what? Like, she, so she says something magical might be going on. Yeah, Do those not guys bad. not sound magical to you? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, it's true that the the Yama Kings yeah. may be. She yeah, she seems very socially magical. invested in those specific bedtime stories being wrong. Possibly because she grew up with these terrible stories and being terrified of them, and and doesn't want them to be right. Uh, that's true. Not that she'd remember, apparently. Not that she'd remember. Let's ask about that. Okay, she yeah. Uh... Uh, let's let's back off again. Yeah, it's worked its out so far. All right, talk to you later. T T Y L. Sorry, computer person. So I should use a uh, text speak. All right. Um, other than checking in with Duncan, I think we're good to go. We uh, we actually did check in with Duncan immediately after the last mission. That's true. Uh, you can stay unchecked for a moment longer. We've done a lot of talking to Duncan in the game so far, and I enjoy it, but there's uh, there's quite a lot of people to talk to, and uh, only limited screen time available. I'm not talking to this asshole again, handsomely. Um, we've decided what kind of shopping we want to do. We will be talking to Crafty again some more, but not yet. We don't need to buy more medical stuff, actually. I mean, possibly we should buy another trauma kit, or we could just be more careful. <laughs> Try and avoid buying more trauma kits. If we went to Kindly's place, we would be signing up for this party thing so let's not do that yet let's uh let's i kind of like let's buy our Sorry, stuff on. and then mm. see what we have left over for maybe a trauma kit or two yeah all right so i'll actually save the game a proper save here because i do think i, I generally i generally prefer to like mm -hmm. get through a fight in an interesting way with a trauma kit than have to replay it all over again yep uh maybe yeah uh, we'll see <laughs> that's what we did last time and i'm fine with that uh, there is Club 88 as well. I, I, I want to know what's in there. I, I suppose think you have I remember. I th gossip that, on with her. Well, remember that smuggler left and we don't have anyone selling us guns? I believe this is the gun that show. That's true. I, I, I'm clicking. Oh, no, the gun show is... Whoa, that's loud. Yeah. It's, it's, well, it's a club, I guess. Fair enough. There's someone called Xflo. There's another big troll. Kellen Kafai. I've heard his name somewhere before. Um, Henry they're Kafai. All, yeah, they're, the, fa the Kafai family owns this place. Maybe I shouldn't just open this door without talking to them first. They seem large. Hmm. 
Welcome to Club 88. No killing, no fighting, no sex trade. I can live with that. I'm Danny Flash. His wife sells guns, his son sells drugs, and his other son kills you. It's a metaphor, it's Danny. A ship. Yeah. <laughs> it's always a ship. <laughs> That's really funny. It's like the only non carfi in the place. I better I feel like I'll talk to all the others before that person. Just uh, gotta respect the trolls here. This is the one who sells you substances. He's also got a cool thing on his ear. What is his job? A prince of Club 88. The heir apparent. His birthright is to sell drugs. Not right now, thanks. Alright, I seriously cannot hear you over the game audio because they've jacked up this club oh, music okay. so high. I'm sorry about that. Okay, that means that people listening to the videos might not be able to hear me either. I will turn this down as well. Uh, in fact, is this... Ambient? I think the problem is this is treated as ambient rather than music. Has that improved matters? Yeah, that's that's much better. Okay, yeah. I was enjoying listening to the music, but I would rather people be able to hear us. Alright, so who is X-Flow? <laughs> A wiry elven woman propped up on one elblow. She glances back at you over her shoulder. She's a drunk. Uh, or at least she likes drinking. But uh, she's not impressed by the selection on offer. Uh, she's from Williamsburg. <laughs> call me x -Flow, by the way. Okay, you can call me Danny Flash. You smell like Shadowrun as a new yen. Oh, yeah. okay. She's a Shadowrunner for hire. Nice. Huh. I might as well talk about it. Mystic Adept. Kind of a physical adept magician. I threw spells and I kill with a touch. You know, this sounds... Uh, Familiar. That sounds like us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Rarer than a unicorn, <laughs> she said to the unicorn. Yeah, well, we won't disillusion her. Uh, Runner stories. Heard some good ones from Gobbit. Kresnodusky Cry. That's so cool. Abkhazian military software. For some reason, this, this concept really tickles my funny bone. The idea of stealing Abkhazian military AI from Eastern Europe. Halo jump from a drone on the Russian side of the border. That's a really big distinction. Uh, illustration of the distinction between simple and easy. A halo jump yes. from a drone. Yes, uh, that is not, a, not an easy thing to survive. Started getting cut apart before it even breached the first cordon. Yeah, I would not have taken this job. <laughs> Sounds like a job for commandos, not shadow runners down to five of us by the time we got into the main facility. We had a rigger, thankfully. Ah, explosions. Well, that was cool, I guess. I'm glad I wasn't there, though. How do you end up base jumping off drones? Grew up in the streets running with gangs. This woman really is like alternate history Danny Flash, isn't she? Yep. Sinless, can't panhandle. Yeah, that's the thing about sinlessness. It's not easy to come back from it. If you haven't got a corporate ID, you can't just go and get one. Don't tell me she's from Seattle. No, she she's Australian. Okay. For some reason, um, in the cyberpunk settings, Sydney is usually a thing. Like. You have, you know, salt wastes around it, or a civil war, or yeah. some kind of military government. Well, Mad, like, Mad Max still... just sort of just yeah. set that tone permanently. Oh, well, of course. Everyone's seen Mad Max. Yeah, fair enough. It is the only Australian city anyone outside this country's ever heard of as well. Sydney actually sucks, unfortunately. Come to Melbourne instead. Anyway. Uh, Paris, London, Vladivostok, Caracas, Johannesburg, Azania. Yeah, I, I bet it is, considering where Johannesburg is. Well, X Flo has clearly had an interesting life, and uh, she could probably get better drinks than they serve here somewhere. Why is she in Hayo, I wonder? Sadly, I don't think we'll ever use her, because we can't not take <laughs> Danny. <laughs> yeah, it would be inconvenient. But yes, it's cool to know about. And presumably somewhere behind here is uh, 
Mrs. Kafai, the gun seller, who we probably don't actually want to buy any guns from right now. In fact, maybe I'll come back to this place later. Well, if we're taking you know, Duncan, like, we might be able to find a better uh, rifle than he currently he does has. use weaponry. In fact, he saved our asses with his use of guns. Um, Ermin Kafai. Can I help you? What do you th what do you think? Does she work here, buddy? <laughs> no, I, what I asked was you in charge here. <laughs> and she clearly is. All right. Guns. We have a Seska Black Scorpion, a smart leg version of that of um security guns. What, what okay, what is smart link? Smart link is just an, an accuracy buff. Uh, you need a certain level in range to use it. I think it's ranged and two. And you also need a data jack, it seems. Yeah, required a data jack. I don't know if Duncan's got that, but we'll be saving the game before we buy anything. Right. Sniper rifle. No, he probably doesn't because he's... he's um... He was talking about getting some cyberware, but he hasn't gotten it yet. Yeah. Well, no, he, he doesn't like cyberware. He was one of those wellness guys. Oh, yeah. Well, hopefully he'll get over that. And some more armored clothing. Okay, so I do want to prioritize decking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, no, I don't need anything else. Goodbye. I'm going to go poise ourselves, pose ourselves, place ourselves. A maximum law. Um, save the game. Buy what seems like what we might want for decking. Go and buy what it seems like we might want for guns and then start the mission. Does that seem like it's going to waste the least amount of time here? I think so, yeah. We should know pretty quickly if we can actually equip that stuff on them because we can do the, yeah. the equipping from the loadout screen. Uh, but Tell you launch. what, if you're watching this video and we suddenly cut to the same exact place but talking about uh, it like time has passed, you'll know it didn't work out very well. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's see. Okay. Here. I'm here for tech. Wait, sorry. Hang on. Back up a sec. We could tell him information about the job we're on. Uh, oh, no, oh the metadata the is did. bragging to him and making him think we're cool. Yeah, hell yes, we wrecked the feng shui. Indeed we did. Our clients wanted people to know what they'd done, so... Yeah. Ooh, we proactively boosted our quarterly outcomes by mindfully onlining our beige cushions into a little circle. Uh, why are the tech, the tech guys are like this? Like, they, they don't believe magic is real. It's very strange. <laughs> yeah, apparently. It's actually a thing in Shadowrun, isn't it? This yeah. is a, supposedly yeah. a theme of the game as a whole, that essence, magic, and, um, and the high technology the game has are at odds with each other and actually interfere with each other's functioning. So it's, it's a thing that, yeah, deckers don't really believe in magic and wizards just don't care about computers. Yeah, we did in fact get blood and gunfire all over it. Mostly my blood, actually. Huh. We get... It's giving us a program for this. Uh, we have okay. Sniffer and... I don't think we... We have... The program we, we have is Killer, not Killjoy, isn't it? Yeah, I don't believe we have Killjoy. Cool. Uh, now, also buying stuff. I will buy the big deck, and we'll see whether Isabel actually needs it. And these 1.0 level programs, I'm not so sure about. What's Firewall 1.0 again? Firewall. Huh. That slows people down. Nah. Not what I thought uh, it was. Doesn't seem that great, does it? Maybe that's all we've got at the slow. Reduces AP. So what's, one could be good. what's good about these new decks is I believe that IP 225 means you get a lot of um uh those are your, those are your uh your points to play around points? with no like the, yeah. the when, when you spend 50 points to get past a checkpoint or whatever i believe that's what you're playing around with all right well that would be nice i guess the only one i'll try buying here is slow it's it's cheap and could be useful do we have now yeah, we'll go get some have actual shield 1.0 have... or i don't know okay let this yeah, there's also like an outfit which um, may or may not be. We've got several characters to give outfits to, so we probably do want that. And, uh, shield 1.0. I'm not sure that one's worth it. No, I'm not sure that I'd ever spend an action point on that. Yeah, um, let's just go with the outfit and go and buy guns and uh, see whether we've got a reasonable set of things. See you later, Law. I think what we should do is try and memorize basically everyone's equipment mm -hmm. that, uh, next time we get into a mission 
I have a pretty decent idea. Um, what's his name? Uh, Duncan's... I have no idea whatsoever. <laughs> I'm glad you do, then. Duncan's uh, rifle is better than the standard rifle. It might be better than any rifle you can buy right now. It will not be better than the next tier rifle, but Duncan might, might upgrade it automatically. Um, All right, so let's find out. Um, oh, hey, we get to actually introduce ourselves now that we've come back here twice. Uh, Omen Kafai was presumably not assuming would survive the first encounter. Passes through. It's got a direct shot, then they leave. Fair enough. And she's heard something about us. Oh, no, she hasn't. <laughs> okay. well, she's heard that we're allowed to buy stuff here, which is probably yeah, enough. Yeah, that's, that's good enough. That's the main thing to hear. Uh, has she heard of a man called Raymond Black? No. Okay. Well, guns, then. Okay, so... There is... Yeah, I th he did... The, the Raffaello, I think, is not worth buying for Duncan. Street Sweeper, also not, because it's too low capacity, isn't it? Well, the question is, because... Alright, so he has the Semopol. He does have this mm -hmm. first one, um, which is better than the AK-97. Um, so my the thing about the shotguns is they're just... They serve a different use case than rifles. It might be good mm -hmm. for Duncan. I assume the use case is shooting in a wide arc at short distance yes. in front of you, because it's a shotgun. Um, and it might be good just to have that on Duncan, um, but it's not yeah, necessarily obviously. worth spending money on uh, in a mm. large fashion. Um, and I'm not sure he has the Smart Link hookup. Yeah. We could afford 400 but I'm sure there's other things to spend it on as well. Grenades? We've got some. I might try and just be frugal here for now and then regret it later? Possibly so. Yeah, um, let's do it. Let's go for the regrets. Okay. I will possibly ready. advise that if we're going to be this frugal on equipment, we should be non-frugal on at least buying one trauma kit. That's a good idea. Yep. <laughs> Those kind of synergize with each other. Not being as powerful and healing yourself uh, is a good combo. Also, I, uh, I like Ambrose. Hey, look, we can poke around on his computer. There's a big Sahara Combat League race tonight. <laughs> no. Yeah, how the hell did this guy get to Hong Kong? It involves some jobs, a girl, a real good reason to leave Chicago, a whole shit ton of guns. All and the classics. Yeah. Uh... Shadow running? Everything seems to come back to shadow running these days. Hey, he was a rigger. I, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Revolt truck. Speaking of Mad Max, this guy seems to have been living it. But, uh, he's uh, sad that you can't have highway combat inside Hong Kong. Yeah, it doesn't seem built for it. Like I, can, like, I assume that stuff's still going on in Nevada or whatever. Unless that's a blasted oh, out yeah. waste. In a, well, even if it is a blasted well, out even waste. Even if it is a blasted out yeah, waste. Especially yeah. if it's a blasted out waste. Sometimes a guy just needs a change of scene. Yeah. This Chicago quarantine thing, is this referring to the plot of Shadow Run Returned? It might be. Um, I think it is. Containment zone. Yeah, insect spirits. I recall this. Sounds rough, let's move on, because I don't have the right etiquette to talk about it. But, uh... Yeah, the girl who got him here, he's uh... perhaps not involved with her today. Alright, now he wants to sell me things. Now I do want to buy. Uh... There's really only one relevant purchase. And this is that purchase. Yep. Goodbye, Ambrose. All right, let's see what we can do on that uh, deployment screen. Let's let's head into the subway. Oh, we could and... take a look at Spider Shen. I don't think she, that they'll have found mm, anything new, we though. We will. We will. Yes. I also don't expect much to come of it, but it would be nice if it did. Wait, that's not Spider Shen. No, they're uh, maybe take I've a gone right, to the wrong place. Take a right and then down this. Yeah. yeah. 
That is Shen. Counting out cred sticks. And sorting them into strangely named metal bins. Why? Why do this? Well, all of these sound like gang leaders. So I assume... They do. Hey, she pays kindly for rent. Still, I'm Lou is a direct boss. Lucky Ping gets a finder's fee in Grandfather Wu. It's a different kind of finder's fee. Huh. I kind of like the, the Shadowrunner part arm of the organization where they pay us. Yes. But I'm not going to call it a scam because kindly Cheng will have me killed if I do. It's a good life, all things considered. There's also answers to White Ming, to a, a whole variety of people. Okay. Anyway, um, probably isn't anything relevant here. Like, there's nothing we can afford and don't have. Fair enough. Yep. Maybe someday later. Goodbye. All right, to the subway. Look, more lotuses. Enough of Hayoi's distractions. There's, there are way more people we could talk to and chat up and possibly even get side quests from, but we will be back here at least one more time. And uh, it'd be nice to have some action. Or at least a prep screen. We'll be heading to the outskirts of Taipo to loot a dig site and museum for Mr. Drake, the archaeologist. Alright. Right. Brent Shirky, no. We're not hiring a Brent. Yeah. <laughs> Not even if we had a good dog available. Um, it right, looks like we're running. Explo is available as teased. I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look at her build. <laughs> She's using the same outfit we are, as well as killing as magic resistance, stride, mana ball wand, strip armor, strip armor. That's what we need on Danny Flash. Hmm. That is a good way to do damage with punches. Noted. Okay, we'll be looking out for that. But, uh, but as things stand, I, I guess it's the crew. So far, we're keeping our uh, our new friends, yeah, right? Let's see what um, each of these has. Uh, we have to move, I believe, to the next screen to do that. No. Can we? No, we do have to. It's just it's just misleading. Okay. Yeah, we do go to the next screen, and then we get to pull things out of our stash and assign stuff. I think. No. The dig. This job is a golden opportunity. We've been asked to retrieve two tomes from the ancient catacombs before they're catalogued. Shattered glass and looting is encouraged. Yeah, here we are. Oh, okay. Equipment screen. <laughs> it's just in a weird place. That is very strange. Uh... Yep. All right, so is there any special characteristics to these outfits? They don't really... No. They're kind of themed. They, I think it's visual. Yeah. So let's see what they look like. And uh, all of our buddies are locked, of course. Fortunate. Yeah. Oh, right. So does that mean I should not have bought any of these yes, things? But... Oh, hang on. Looned. Oh, I guess that's, that's just a all. base. I guess we just can't unequip it. Oh, okay. All right, we'll see if it's actually better, at least. Yeah, so let's revert that. Um, Isabel's gear, Duncan's armored vest, and Gobbit's right, so, rags are actually base two and one. Yeah. So yes, Gobbit should take a. Um, should take mm -hmm. three armor. Maybe we'll give her the um, the cargo carrier. Basic nylon street clothes might not look very good on her, but she needs armor. And uh, Duncan doesn't want to get a shot either. He can have the armored clothing that seems to make sense on him. Yeah. All right. We also have this deck. Let's Isabel's see what base deck, deck is. Ooh. Yeah, four two 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 twenty five three, four two 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 twenty five three. God damn it! <laughs> I think this video will cut now. It seems that the situation has changed. So one thing we now have that cool strip armor spell, and in fact four. Gobbit, a spell which creates armor. Oh, I thought we did. Oh, yeah, here we are. Uh, it's not working for some reason. 
There must be some way to actually teach Gobbit this magic spell. Ooh, interesting. Alright, so the lock does mean lock sometimes, but not other times. Maybe what it means is that you have to swap spells for each other. Maybe if you can have something instead of Poison Fog? Yes. Okay. So it's got a limit. Oh, right. Your spell book is limited in size. Okay. So let's make Bob Gobbit a buffing and, and submachine guns character yep. for this run and see how it goes. Poison Fog sucked anyway. Yeah, it, it basically did. Yes, because her chance to hit with it is too low. We'll also give her some shamanic ritual gob. And as for the other characters, well, Danny's already got a street monk outfit on. Um, Zero Bell can have this uh, this stuff from Maximum Law, which you can fit a lot of things in your pocket. Hey, I'm kind of feeling bad about giving her this, because this is like... Okay, you know those guys in maybe 2007 to 2009? The, the everyday carry guys? guys? Yes, yeah. internet message boards. Here are pictures of all the stuff I bring with me when I go to my IT job. She's even got the pistol. I'm a sysadmin. She's even got the yeah, pistol. Yeah. yeah, we're making Isabel into one of those guys. I'm sorry. Everyday carry is it's more armor. Yeah, yeah no, it it, it it flatly does need to go on because um, we're gonna get shot a lot. Yeah, <laughs> armor is powerful in this game. We have been learning. Like, like uh, and... in fairness, if those guys were going on like active shooter situation attacks on the rival to guys IT department they'd be justified in carrying their Glock yeah and also it doesn't seem to affect the character's appearance anyway oh that's good that makes sense <laughs> I don't think they want to model yeah. all that stuff um in... I think Danny himself is affected by the uh the gear go to the back to the individual and throw some of that crap in the um the drugs into our stash so we have actual room in our items like, I don't think we're going to be... Are, you, are we going to be taking Bliss on the run? I don't know. It, <laughs> just, uh, it reduces just... incoming damage by four for five rounds of combat. All right. I mean, it, it also debuffs our strength. Um, yeah, I won't give it to Danny. <laughs> you need strength to punch people. Might give it to Gobbit or Duncan. I, would it be irresponsible to get Duncan addicted to street drugs? Yes, it would. Uh, he might already be, because okay. he's a cop. Um, okay. Go Gobbit almost certainly does not care and will eat anything. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. What's that other drug do? It's Toku. <laughs> okay, this one. Uh, this one makes you. Okay, that's actually great yeah. for physical adepts. That's actually really good. So let's keep that one. And a grenade. I don't know if Dan Danny should be carrying this grenade though. Um, he will never be using it. There is always yeah. something more useful for him to be doing than throwing a grenade. So who should we give the grenade to? Gobbit might be in a situation where her cooldowns are such that she has nothing useful to do besides flail with that mm. stupid um, submachine gun. So, <laughs> Which is not very good. Yeah. yeah. Gobbit's a lot cooler than she is effective. So far, I mean, I think we need to build out. her a bit differently um, in a way that, you know, we don't have access to the tools for yet. Mm -hmm. uh, All right, well, let's head into the actual main mission then. Yeah. The Emperor's Tomb. Unless I've forgotten something here. No, I think we're good. Specifically, I think we want to um, get Gobbit a rifle instead of a submachine gun at some point. That's probably a good idea. All right, so here we are at the so-called Emperor's Tomb. What actually happened is some rich guy found catacombs beneath his mansion. And was like, hey, now I can be double rich. All right. Drake, the archaeologist, has given us a way into the site, and he's calling us again. Okay. The wordy orc. Quite like this guy. Oh god, he's going to be in our ear too. He's he's a, he got us on yeah, FaceTime. He's a handler. Excellent. Well, we're playing Alpha Protocol now. Alarm suppression should keep you afloat. Hmm. <laughs> Will it? We'll see about that. <sighs> and the main thing he wants us to find are these books, these ancient tomes. All right. Well, I think we spent too much time fucking around with equipment stuff um, to responsibly start. We did spend a while. Yes. Ah. Uh, Whoa, lights are on. Okay, yeah, possibly we should save the game here and come back to this at a later date. Yeah. And uh, survey this site. Gobbit says she's always wanted to break into a catacomb. No? That's, what does she mean? These artifacts have all been stolen it's, from really? the Earth. Really? The Earth? Like. Huh. The I guess she's saying they don't belong in a museum. She is a really, like, I, that's a very, like, possession is the entirety of the law. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess she is a shaman. Duncan points out that this is stupid. 
um, that you know we, we are also stealing these things. Also, like it doesn't belong <laughs> to the Earth; it belongs to the people who put them in. The Earth. Well, right. I guess my they perspective is going to be anymore. different. In fact, they, they did. Oh, that's yeah. true. Objects like these are too bright to remain in some vault or display case. She's excited to be a part of the cycle. I like Gobbit. She's weird. Yep. She's, she's got perspectives. I feel like her writing, she's got like a unique perspective which is odd but internally consistent. So that's cool. So we've got a shitload of, object of objectives and uh, none of them will we attempt to carry out today. I can see some ley lines here and here. I can see an objective marker, various museum looking things, statue of the Buddha. Here off in this little corner. All right. Um, next I'm time. Done for now. Yeah, Gotta run some after our adventure with inventory adjustments. Run some shadows. <laughs> break some display cases. See you next time. We will. Thanks for watching.